Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play the Thousand Year Door. Okay, so let's go ahead and board the XS, XS Express. This train is bound for luxurious Poshley Heights. Will you be boarding today? Absolutely. Wonderful. If you don't mind, please allow me to check your ticket. Sure thing. Watch your step, please. All aboard! All aboard! Yeah, he already said that once, buddy. <laughs> okay, so we are now on the train heading to Poshley Heights. So this train's pretty cool. Uh, definitely much upgraded from the train that took us to uh, Mount Rugged in the original Paper Mario. Too bad it doesn't shoot little stars out the uh, <laughs> at the top there, but I guess you can't uh, can't have everything. So now that we're on the train and heading towards Poshley Heights, we are now officially starting out with Chapter Six, which is Three Days of Excess. And it's awesome stuff. Like I've said before, Chapter 6, uh, I would probably call it my favorite chapter in the game. It's a nice change of pace, and I'm pretty excited for it, actually. So, this is Mario's room, if you couldn't tell. It's, uh, very painfully red, but... Oh, yeah, the Access Express. This is so deluxe, man. The three days to Poshley Heights are gonna be over like that. Oh, what's that? Huh? Hey, you see that? Something on the floor. When did that get there? What, are you gonna read it to me? Who taught you how to read, anyway? Don't go to Poshley Heights, get off the train now, or a sticky, yummy doom awaits it. Ooh, a sticky, yummy doom. Whoa, what a freaky threat. You don't think this could be Beldum's work, do you? I don't think so. Whoever this psycho is, you gotta figure they're on this train, right? We gotta get this nut before anything bad goes down on this train. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Okay, so pretty much right out of the gate here, they're uh, giving us a little objective. We've been handed a vague threat underneath the uh, door. And as you also may be able to see, this is actually pretty easy to miss, even though it's right on in the open. There's a shine spread right there to pick up. So, it's good stuff. There's a dried shroom inside the drawer. Oh, yeah, great. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so we can head out here, and it's worth doing a little bit of exploring around. Uh, where we need to be going is actually on the far left side of the train, but there's a whole bunch of cabins here. Uh, so we can pretty much just check out all of them. It's a pretty good idea to sort of get a lay of the land before... Uh, you know, we actually get into stuff, because you, you'll, you'll kind of want to remember where people are, so it's a pretty good idea. Well, that is a fat toad. Look at that. He's got to be related to Gourmet Guy, huh? Hey, hello there. You know, I used to dream of one day getting to ride on this train, and now I finally got a ticket. Dreams do come true. Alright, so I'll just leave you to whatever you're doing there, and let's head over to the right. Now this is like the uh, the ritziest of the ritzy cabins, pretty much. We've got some uh, pretty big names here. This chick uh, pretty much just looks rich. I mean, you can just tell by looking. Well, hello there, you ducky debonair dish of a man, you. You're smashing, dear. What's this? A witch? Well, people have certainly said that I'm possessed of an enchanting aura. But you're the first person to remark so boldly on my bewitching beauty, dear. Yeah, they're also a little bit stuck up, but whatever. And we can go over here to cabin number one, and uh, we've got sort of a... I don't know what you would call this guy, but <laughs> interesting, so to speak. Hey, guy. Yeah, you know this, but I'm the absurdly famous movie star, Zip Toad. I'm gonna shoot this little multi-billion dollar art flick in Poshley Heights, yo. Oh, and uh, I only sign autographs for cute chicks. Sorry about that, guy. Yep, so that is Zip Toad, who's apparently a famous movie star. I think we should see what Gumbella has to say about him. I knew I knew him! That's Sipto, the movie star. Women go nuts for him. You know, he's hot and all, but he seems pretty stuck up about being famous. I guess all celebrities are kind of like that. It's too bad, because I kind of liked him. Yeah, well, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you're going to be getting through to him anytime soon. Alright, so let's get our speedy ride back out. And as we come over here to the right, this is pretty much the uh, front of the train here. We're going to be in the engine room, and there is the... Uh, engineer here. Greetings, welcome to Excess Express. I'm what's called the train engineer. Our, our opulent journey to Poshley Heights will take approximately three days. How do you find your accommodations? Are they not incredibly splendid? Our furnishings delight the eye, but the sway of our locomotive delights all else. So let's all hear it for the Excess Express. Huzzah! Huzzah! Alright, buddy. I'm a little excited there. Alright, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to explore over here on the right for now. So let's uh, go ahead and go back to the other end. The only thing about this chapter is there's a lot of, like, walking back and forth through cabins. I mean, because there's only, like, four or five different screens here of the train. And, you know, sometimes you'll have to go from end to end multiple times. Uh, because of that, I guess it can get a little bit monotonous, I suppose. But, I don't know, just like the awesomeness of this chapter, I don't really even mind. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the dining car where you eat and stuff. Some people take this train just so they can eat our yummily fabulous food. In this trip, we have a super famous actor on board. Zip Toad, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm totally swooning. I so hope he comes here to eat soon. Yeah, we, we gotta see what Goombella says about this chick here. That's the waitress of the Access Express. Kinda spacey. Think she's an okay waitress? Probably not, but guys always go for girls like this, don't they? Why is that, Mario? Well, Goombella, there's this thing we adults like to call being easy. But, oh, <laughs> okay, anyway, forget about that. Let's <laughs> talk to the cheap cheap over here, the chef. Hello, I am Chief Shimmy, the culinary expert. Glad to make your complaintance. Uh, I mean acquaintance. So sorry, cheap cheap is my first language, you know. Today's lunch is so amazing it will make your tongue cry out in shame. Please do taste it so that my passion does not wither alone in a pot of loneliness. <laughs> Alright then, buddy. Yeah, so that guy's kind of funny. Butcher some words sometimes. There's a little store back there. You can see what they sell. I'm not going to really bother with it. And here we are in Cabin 6. This is one we're actually going to be visiting a few times. I'm on my way back home. I've stayed so long I've forgotten what it looks like. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, that guy's kind of cool looking. Let's check out Cabin 7 here. Uh, oh, it's a, it's a rat guy. Me? I have a very important deal to attend to once we arrive at Poshley Heights. I'm traveling on business, so everything goes on the expense account. Yes! <laughs> Must be nice. And finally, the last cabin, cabin number 8. And we may recognize these guys. We saw them back in Glitzville. It's the uh, family of bob -Oms. Yeah, I'm Bub, and we're going to get a birthday present for me, and it'll be cool. Aren't you jealous? Yeah, not really. We are en route to Poshley Heights to a birthday to buy a birthday present for little Bub here. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my. What about you? Oh, you are the champion of the Glitz Pit, are you not? Yes, the Great Gonzalez. Bound for Poshley Heights? Well, it is certainly a fitting place for a celebrity like you. Okay, so that's all the people really around here. Uh, this guy over here is the conductor of the train. And I trust you must be Mr. Mario from Room 5. Make yourself at home, sir. What's that? Some sort of a sticky, yummy threat? Uh, I see. Good gracious me. If I hear anything else, I will let you know immediately. Alright, so we've pretty much done our job for now. We've warned the conductor about the threat, and we talked to pretty much everybody else, so I guess there aren't really any other leads for now. So, let's just go ahead and start heading back. Whoa, what's going on here? I thought I was going to have a nice lunch on my expense account. Rats! This is truly unfortunate. Almost tragic, really. Uh, what's going on? I'm dying for a taco, guy. Couldn't you just whip up some grub real quick? What? They took the whole pot? Really? The whole deal? This isn't in my contract. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no, and Zip Toad is here and everything. No, my life is totally ruined. Eh, you'll be fine. No, my heart cries out in the salty pain of misery. That was my master beast. I mean, my masterpiece. And now it is gone and I am left with tears of, of, tears of horror in my eyes. Hmm, yes, I can say without the slightest hesitation that this smells like a case to me. But what shall we call it? That is the question before us. Yes, what to call it? Yes, the case of the pot of supper stew that vanished suddenly and mysteriously. Indeed, that will do quite nicely. Hmm, my dear train passengers, this is a full-fledged mystery, one that impacts you all. Whoa, what a mystery? A mystery, you just said? And, um, uh, er, exactly what kind of dish is that? I am known as Pennington. You likely would not guess it, but I am a detective. At the risk of immodesty, you might say I have a certain nose for these things. And this little conundrum, my dear fellow passengers, poses no challenge to me. Ooh! The central clue of this case, and also the most vital one as it happens, is that our perpetrator took the whole pot, stew and all. And this, esteemed friends, leads me to believe that the one responsible... is you, you gluttonous woman! <laughs> hey, uh... Just accusing people randomly, that's not nice. What? Me? Are you totally cuckoo? I have, like, no idea what you're talking about. Um, uh, pardon me, sorry. Please accept my apologies, my dear woman. Yeah, that's right. I felt I needed to practice my accusation skills, you understand? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jeez. <clears throat> Very good. Now, let us get serious, shall we? This, I believe, will be a case worthy of my intellect. Hmm, yes. Let me get this straight. So what we know so far is that we don't know who the culprit is, and uh, I guess that's about it, right? <laughs> much. Oh, this needs for total squares. Forget you guys, I'm going back to my room. 
Hmm, you there. In a bit of a hurry to get back to your room, eh? You, sir, are highly suspicious. I have just broken this case. The true culprit, I believe, is Zip Toad, the actor. Zip Toad? The Zip Toad? No way, Mr. Detective Person. You're just making stuff up. You, you Tweety Geezer. Tweety Geezer? Geezer? I can't say I deserve such a verbal thrashing, but... Well, then, who did do it, hmm? Hmm, this puzzle deepens with every confounding step. Hmm, okay. I got anything else to say here, you bright mind, you? You and my whiskered friend have been hovering rather, rather suspiciously, haven't you? I find that rather suspect. Highly suspect indeed. People, I have apprehended the rogue. Yes, I have broken the case wide open. He has been skulking about the area the whole time, under our very noses. The pot of supper stew that vanished suddenly and mysteriously bandit is you! Okay, you can't just go around throwing random accusations or call yourself a detective here, alright? You're not the bandit, you say. Hmm, indeed you would say that. Well, if you are not, in fact, the crook, then perhaps you can prove your innocence by searching for the real perpetrator. Then we will know that it is not you, fair? Yeah, make me do all the work. Nice job. Everyone's just kind of ignoring, you know, the real clue, which is this over here. A clue. There are traces of something on the carpet. Oh, this looks like spilled stew on the carpet. Nasty. I almost stepped in it. We can just follow the trail of the thief, don't you think? And you know what? It might even be the nut who made the sticky, yummy thread. What makes me say that? If you steal, you probably do other bad stuff, right? <laughs> uh, I guess, but I don't know. Alright, so we're gonna follow the trail of Stew back to, uh, hopefully the perpetrator. So, let's, uh, go here, and it looks like it leads into this room. Oh, it was the fat guy! I should have known! Whoa, 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 what do you want? Sorry about that. Now, what were you just saying? Apart from the kitchen. Oh, I get it. Food gets stolen and you blame the chubby guy. Not nice. <laughs> What? Chops of stew on the floor outside? Uh, no, I wouldn't know anything about that. No, people spill stuff. And there's nothing in the drawer, so no need to look. You won't find a thing. Aha! I think we have discovered it. Is it in the drawer? Several gourmet food magazines. Yeah, I'm not surprised. One of them is an issue devoted to the food of the Access Express. There's a large photo of che Chef Shimmy on the cover. Oh, there's something under the magazines. Holy crap, he put an entire pot in there? Wow, that, that's... Pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive, I gotta say. Don't! Oh, I'm sorry, I ate it all. It was me! <laughs> yeah, I think we figured that out, buddy. So, you were so enamored of the stew that you wanted to steal it to devour more. And you sold the entire pot when the chef was chopping shallots? Answer. Yes, yes, that's right. I'm so sorry, but it was a brief moment of weakness. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Justice has been served. Very satisfying. May this terrible crime never recur. And you, my dear sir... Yes, you with the unkempt facial hair. My keen sleuthing instincts identified you as the correct person to call her the ruffian. Now about that note in your room... Yes, I know of it. As the lone detective on this train, the conductor confided in me. But we cannot speak here. Find me in room 6 so that we may discuss this in private. Oh, and please return the pots to the chef if you could. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Alright, so first mystery solved. Yeah, this chapter is pretty reminiscent of when you enter uh, Shiver City for the first time in the original Paper Mario, except the uh, the mysteries are on a much, much larger scale here, so. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun, though. I really enjoy it. It's, like I said, it's definitely a nice change of pace, you know. So. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to return the pot. Sorry. Almost forgot, buddy. So you found the beef. Or, or wait, I mean the thief. I am joyful. There you go. Here's your pot back. Ah, sir, you are the hero of my world. You have even brought my pot. It is empty, of course, but it is mine, and I love it. Thanks to you, from me. Here's just a little taste of my powerful gratitude. Please fake it. Ah, why must I butcher this language so... so shameful? Please take it, I mean. And we get a star piece. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to be heading into Pennington's room, which is room number six. We've seen him before. This one right here. And uh, hopefully he will help us uncover something about the uh, veiled threat we received. Although, uh, I don't have much faith in this guy personally, but I don't know. Maybe something will happen. But anyway, we're about to run out of time, so in the next part, we will do what I just said. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.